What's up? My name is James. Uh, so, I had a fucking epic failure uh, trying to do a Twitch stream. Um, which sucks, but like, can't handle being a people being assholes. Uh, my internet got knocked out by somebody dosing me. No shit. I'm not, I'm not even being an asshole about it. Uh, so, I'm not going to touch Twitch again, but I am happy to do a breakdown here of how I use the tools to build out a lineup, since that was kind of the most uh, frequently asked thing here. So, um, obviously, first we go to the site, and I'll do close-up screen. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go over and go to the NFL main range of outcomes. Um, this is where you're going to start every single slate. Um, make sure that the last available update is relatively recently. Um, this one is the most recent update, but if you want to be for sure, you can load or reset the data. Just uh, to be clear, don't do this just willy-nilly because you will kill the quota uh, and make it impossible for other people to use the tools. So don't use this super frequently, but um, most of the time it's not going to matter. Most of the time the last update is going to be fine. Uh, so the first thing I do is I want to look and see what lineups and what stacks specifically look best. Uh, when I go and use the range of outcomes, the first thing that I'm doing and really the most important thing is using the team stacks range of outcomes. And just kind of looking and seeing, all right, what stacks look like the best in terms of the median and what t what stacks look like the best in terms of value. So first off, we're looking at median, uh, Cincinnati, Miami, Minnesota, Chargers, and Philadelphia, right? Like those are kind of like the top overall stacks here. And then we kind of start to drop down the ladder a little bit. But really, it's, it's Cincinnati, Miami, Minnesota, and the Chargers. Um, these five stacks look good. Next, I usually sort by 4x percentage. And 4x percentage is letting us see what where the value is. So the best value overall in the models is a Green Bay stack with Jordan Love, Jalen Reed, and Luke Musgrave. Um, overall, the ownership is kind of high, all things considered, with uh, Jordan Love and Luke Musgrave. Uh, after that, we kind of move down a little bit. Carolina, I'm probably not going to touch Carolina stack. Green Bay, probably not going to touch a Green Bay stack, honestly. Um, and then Indianapolis, so Anthony Richards, Alec Pierce, and Mo Alley Cox. This one isn't terrible, mostly because Anthony Richardson might have significant rushing upside. We're just not sure. Uh, moving down a little bit, we can see that most of these are negative leverage. Uh, Green Bay stacks especially, just super negative leverage. They just don't have the upside necessary based on projections. But we do kind of move into this range of New England, the Rams, and Pittsburgh, which all look like positive leverage here. So... If I was going to pay down tomorrow, I would be looking to look at these stacks. Um, Pittsburgh specifically looks pretty good. Uh, the leverage is actually the highest on the slate, I'm pretty sure. Next, I would sort by leverage. And Tennessee with Ryan Tannehill and DeAndre Hopkins and Traylon Burks uh, tied with Kenny Pickett, Deontay Johnson, and George Pickens kind of like as the three top overall stacks in terms of leverage. Um, and they're all relatively cheap, right? Um, 17K to get exposure to DeAndre Hopkins and Traylon Burks, who was kind of a baller at times last year, is fine. Uh, and then Kenny Pick with DeAndre Johnson and George Pickens, that's only 15.5. If you want to pay up at position players, a Pittsburgh stack probably makes a lot of sense. But all of that being said, to be honest, I'm probably just going to be paying up for my stacks. There's not too many stacks that are serious negative leverage, and most of them are relatively good leverage offered, uh, or at least neutral, right? A Minnesota with Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison is pretty good leverage. Um, Philadelphia with A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, because it's so expensive, is pretty good leverage. And then we have some pretty uh, neutral leverage across the board there. And then a, a Seattle stack with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett is pretty low-owned and has pretty decent upside. So... All of that said, based on this, um, Cincinnati, Miami, Minnesota, and the Chargers kind of look like the main stacks that I'm super interested in. The, the next thing that I usually do is kind of go into the quarterback range of outcomes and see who is looking like big chalk. And there's really not anybody that looks like significant chalk. Um, everybody's kind of under 10% owned. So I'm really not worried about quarterback chalk. The only other thing that I usually do is look at tight end chalk because tight end chalk can kind of get a little bit condensed. Um, David Njoku and then Mark Andrews and Pat Fryermuth. Uh, those guys kind of project for some ownership, but really overall, uh, ownership is pretty flat. So after I have done that, uh, typically what I'm going to end up doing is go into the uh, Stack Finder. 
stack finder is next after I do that. So again, I will go in and go close up on the screen. Uh, this is already updated because I did it during kind of like the little video call that I was doing in the Discord. But um, mostly what I want to see is I, I want to go to QB2 here or QB plus 2. And the first thing I'll do is I'll just run the entire slate. So I'll just do run stack analysis on all of the slate and kind of see what it gives me. So again, Cincinnati, Minnesota, and the Chargers with some Seattle. But the other thing that I do is notice what teams out of the top overall stacks look like they are not here anymore. Um, and we can see pretty easily that Miami is just not here. The reason for that is that they project for too much ownership for their projection. Uh, remember, their ownership was somewhere around 37%, I think, as a stack. And that's just too much based on their projections. So we don't get any of them in this run. And that tells me that they're a little bit over-owned. You know, I, I can probably use them in small field stuff, but probably wouldn't be a very good idea for me to use them in uh, large field stuff or even in the qualifier. Uh, it, they would just be too much ownership for me to end up leveling out, even though I know that the models are on some lower owned players. Um, they just overall, for the for the ownership that you're paying for them, they just are too much ownership for the projection they offer. So Cincinnati, Minnesota, and the Chargers look much better. Uh, Seattle stacks look really good too. And then as we can continue to go down, obviously Arizona stacks have a projection and no ownership, so they're going to show up, but you shouldn't fucking play Arizona stacks. The other thing that I want to do here is go into specific teams. So let's take a look at Miami. Like if I wanted to use Miami stacks, what stacks would I use? Uh, the stack that makes the most sense here is going to be this one, this projection of 49, but it has the highest ownership. So after that, you know, we, we have kind of this chunk here and, and these kind of go down and, and all of these are viable um, based on the ownership, but com combining Tyreek Hill with Jalen Waddle. Uh, it's just too much ownership based on the other combinations that you can get for high upside stacks. After that, you can pretty much pair Tyreek Hill or Jalen Waddle with any of the wide receiver twos or tight ends and have decent lineups. But pay attention, you know, if we were to do a full slate run here, that second project that second projected lineup was projected for 40. Like, why wouldn't you just play a Kenny Pickett lineup? You know, it's projected for 39.6. Why wouldn't you play any three of the Seattle stacks? They all project better than the second best Miami stack. So uh, there's just a lot of lineups that make a lot more sense in terms of the projection and ownership than Miami stacks. So the other thing that I want to do is I know that we're interested in Cincinnati stacks because of the team range of outcomes and based on the full slate run of this. So we're interested here in kind of these combinations it looks like Tyler Boyd is kind of the main guy that we're really interested in, though, right? Um, Jamar Chase and T. Higgins show up as the best overall stack, but then you're pairing Tyler Boyd with everyone else. You pair him with Jamar Chase, with T. Higgins, with Irv Smith, Trenton Irwin. You know, all of these guys can be paired with Tyler Boyd. He kind of looks like a really, really interesting option when it comes to Cincinnati when running in, when running things through this. Uh, the other stack that we're interested in here is Miami. And when we run this, Jordan Addison is kind of the guy that shows up in the most of them um, because you get such a large ownership discount when you use him because people just aren't interested in using him. So you end up getting Justin Jefferson with Jordan Addison as the best and then Justin Jefferson with KJ Osborne as the second. You don't even get TJ Hawkinson until you don't pair him with Justin Jefferson, right? Like you're really not using TJ Hawkinson when it comes to Minnesota stack. So that's really important to know as well and, and take note of. The last one that we're interested in here is a Charger stack. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this. And there's only five Charger stacks that are worth using based on ownership. Um, and Keenan Allen is in three of them and Quentin Johnson is in three of them. Um, Mike Williams is only in one. He's in the top overall projected lineup. But when it comes down to it, pairing him with the other things doesn't really make as much sense. It's mostly Quentin Johnson or Keenan Allen, right? And, and realistically, it's Quentin Johnson. So the wide receiver two for those stacks. So after we have broken that down and said, okay, we chose our stacks in the team range of outcomes, and then we went into the stack finder, and now we know that Miami looks a little bit too overowned, 
And when I am running things for Cincinnati or for Minnesota or for the Chargers, it looks like the wide receiver twos are the most important. The next thing that I want to do is go into the contest sims because I kind of want to see how contests are shaking out and see uh, a more realistic version of the stacks that I am using and putting together. So I'm not going to do any uploads here. Uh, again, I'll, I'll zoom in here. I'm just going to go in. Um, for the Wildcat tomorrow, uh, I'm going to consider it a medium. I, I could consider it a small, but I'm going to consider it a medium here. Uh, we're going to say that's a sharp contest. I'm just going to run it on shallow. I could run it on extensive if I wanted to, but I don't feel that I really need to do that for the purposes of this. I'm just kind of showing how I use these tools together. So what it's going to do is it's going to do parsing player tables and creating stack combos over and over again until it's done running. Um, I noted this in the live stream, but if you want my full thoughts on the contest sims, you can go to my YouTube channel. And, uh, oh, you're going to be watching this on YouTube. I posted a, a Contest Sims thing on my YouTube channel, talking a lot about Contest Sims and my thoughts on the industry. Basically, I think that people fucking suck at DFS and uh, aren't going to use them correctly. So, I don't think that it's really going to have that big of an effect on the edge. Anyway, the Contest Sims are done running. So, basically, what we're looking for here, here's a frame shown of all the, con of all the lineups that end up winning this contest. Um, but what we're more interested in really outside of this, like you can do some things with this, uh, I'll likely end up, um, ex exporting this and then doing some data analysis on it and running it through the portfolio sim from theory DFS. So I can kind of see what best lineups end up showing up. But really what I'm interested in here is the overall exposures along with the edge gained on players. So we're getting a lot of Joe Mixon, a lot of Rashad White, um, a lot of Luke Musgrave and a lot of Mike Williams, right? So like those are all the guys over 20% here. If I sort by edge, I can see the players that are the highest overall edge offered. Like Rashad White is only projected for 3% ownership, but, uh, but the exposure in the contest sim for something like the Wildcat is 23%. So I definitely want some Rashad White. I definitely want some Joe Mixon. If I sort this by negative, then I can see who is the most overowned, so who is showing up the least in the contest sims based on their projected ownership. We can see it's Kenneth Walker, Jalen Hurts, uh, Alexander Madison. These guys end up giving us negative edge, but the, the big one is Kenneth Walker here, right? I kind of want to look for anything that's over 5% negative edge, and those are the ones that I'm really trying to get away from. Uh, the other thing that we can do is we can go into each one of these exposures and kind of see uh, which which players are offering the most edge. So Anthony Richardson is offering the most edge in this run at 14%. Justin Herbert is offering the second most edge at 11%. Uh, Jalen Hurts and Justin Fields looking like the most over-owned based on this contest sim. And then we can go to uh, running backs, tight ends, stuff like that, defenses. Like we can see that the Buccaneers defense is the best. Something to note here, and this is something that I did note in the live stream, uh, the reason you're always going to see this the cheapest defense is going to offer the most edge and the most expensive defense is going to offer the work the least the reason for that say it with me defense doesn't fucking matter just play the one that fits best uh it doesn't fucking matter like it's all variant just don't fucking worry about it so this is important to see as well uh the next thing that i want to do so so after i've done this and i see okay um the players that i'm most interested in are players like joe mix and rashad white um, I know that there is quite a bit of Mike Williams here, so I'm going to want to see him as well. Let's now go over and jump into the optimizer. So the optimizer is the next thing that we use because now that we have information on what stacks we're interested in and what players we kind of want to see used with those stacks, we can go to the optimizer and we can get a look at what the optimized lineups are showing us. So again, I'm not going to upload anything here because I don't need to. Uh, it's my site. I do what I want. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to run a cash game lineup and kind of see what the highest projected ownership lineups that I can build are going to be. This is likely the stuff that I'm going to be using in cash games tomorrow. Uh, it looks like it's just a lot of, you know, Anthony Richardson. I know that Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson are both going to be highly owned. Um, commander's defense likely going to be one that shows up a lot. The only changes that I would make to this would probably be trying to lock in somebody like Jamal Williams. So let's go ahead and do that because I know that he's going to be highly owned. So let's go ahead and see what it gives me there now that I've locked him in. 
it's going to give me a little bit higher ownership here, right? Um, Jamal Williams is going to be in there with Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and now Brandon Ayuk showing up. Buccaneers, Commanders probably going to show up. I wonder if I could lock Commanders. I don't think I've ever tried to lock two players in this optimizer. Probably won't work very well, right? No, it's fine. It's fine. I'm good at coding. It's fine. So yeah, that that one, you know, now we have a projection of 90 overall. So now that because I know that Jamal Williams and the Commanders defense were looking like some of the highest chalk, um, you know, that I, I just kind of want to start plugging these guys in, right? Like I know that Alexander Madison looks like chalk as well. So can I plug in three players here? Can we get really crazy and plug in three players here? I don't know if it's a run. Holy shit, I'm good at coding. Uh, anyway, this this is a large achievement. Um, anybody who knows me knows that I don't build like optimizers super duper well. Like, so I'm really I'm proud of this one. Um, so anyway, here we go. Uh, this is probably like the chalk chalk lineup that I would want to use tomorrow, right? 99% um, ownership is really really high. Um, a lot of these guys in terms of ownership are super high. The only ones like Nico Collins is relatively low. Rashad White is relatively low, but this lineup looks like a cash game lineup. So the next thing that I want to do is go into small field GPPs and you, you can choose the pivot optimal if you want. I'm just going to go ahead and do manual. Um, one note is with the pivot optimal, um, don't lock players and don't drop any QBs. It, what it's trying to do with pivot optimal is give you a lineup that like, it's almost like an, it's kind of an easy button where the thing that it wants to do is give you like the highest upside lineup and the highest ownership around it. So the pivot optimal is good if you just don't really want to think about things, but I personally, when I'm building out, want to do it in a manual way. So um, I'm going to go into manual here. Uh, and the stacks that we were interested in, right, were Cincinnati. Actually, let's, let's go ahead and do um, a charger stack here. Let's go ahead and do chargers plus two, and I'm going to force one bring back. There was a question in the Discord about bring backs. Um, I'm fine with forcing it. I kind of play around. Like, I play around with different combinations. I, I'll look to do, like, Chargers 2 plus 1 and, and have a bring back. I'll look to do Chargers 1 plus 1 bring back. I, like, I'll just play around with a lot of different things and kind of see what sticks and what things are important for making these lineups work, right? Um, what, what matters to me the most is seeing what lineups or what players end up the most in the stack. So in a Charger stack and a 2 plus 1, the things that show up the most are going to be Mike Williams at 5,700. He's in 85% of lineups. Keenan Allen and Quentin Johnson kind of split up 65-50. And then Tyreek Hill is the most common bring back here. Um, I, I also end up with a lot of Luke Musgrave. He's going to show up pretty much like in 100% of lineups, I think, in, if you're just running optimals. Um, and then outside of that, you know, Joe Mixon, he's showing up. Rashad White, he's showing up. And Aaron Jones. So... Remember, when I looked at the contest sims, those were kind of the things I wanted to see. I wanted to see that I was getting Joe Mixon. I wanted to see that I was getting a lot of Rashad White. So based on the contest sims stuff, like this lineup right here with Calvin Ridley, Mike Williams, Quentin Johnson, uh, Luke Musgrave, and this is split up, but again, this is going to be fixed tomorrow. Um, this lineup looks really, really good overall for the kind of things that I'm wanting to build. And then I'll, I'll kind of do the same thing. You know, I'll, I'll want to look at Minnesota stacks as well, right? And I'll do a two plus one, and I'll do a two plus zero, and I'll do a one plus one. Like I'll just look at a whole bunch of different combinations, and see the way that I kind of want to build things out. Um, and hopefully that ends up being something that shows me what I want to see out of what I saw from the contest simulations, as well as the pivot finder and stuff like that. So this is kind of the process, um, and then I'll just pick out some lineups, and I'll decide on the best lineups that I want to end up using. So after doing all of that, typically what I would do if there was, uh, you know, chalk showing up in a lot of my lineups, I'm not really getting a lot of chalk, right? Like I'm not getting a lot of Alexander Madison or Jamal Williams. If I was getting a lot of Alexander Madison or Jamal Williams, then the last step for me would be going into Pivot Finder. And the Pivot Finder is going to say, okay, so I was getting a lot of Alexander Madison um, and I had relatively chalky lineups. So... Who is a pivot that I can make off of Alexander Madison to kind of lower the overall ownership and up the leverage of my lineup? So I would run Alexander Madison or whoever the chalk was that was showing up in my lineups through this and see who I should be playing instead. So clearly, you know, Joe, Joe Mixon looks like a far superior play 
the leverage is really high. I always sort by leverage and see who the best overall option would be if I wanted to get on or off of some chalk. You can also kind of do this the opposite way and say, all right, well, I'm getting a lot of Joe Mixon, so who would I want to to pivot off of him and lower the volatility of my lineup and get more ownership? And that would be, you would sort by ownership and then you would get on Alexander Madison. So that's kind of my process for building things out. Um, obviously, I'm not going to show you how to build lineups that I'm playing because I want to maintain my edge. But that's kind of the process that I would go through. Um, you can do a lot of different things with these tools, and I'm happy to answer questions. But mostly, I think that you should let the tools guide you in terms of the players that you should be interested in, not necessarily the lineups that you should play. I think that you should hand build the lineups that you should play, um, or if you have an optimizer that you prefer to use, Fantasy Cruncher or whatever. Um, you can then go take the insights that you gain from running these tools and saying, oh, Rashad White looks really valuable. Joe Mixon looks really valuable. The Chargers, Minnesota, and Miami stacks look really valuable. I want to go build a, a bunch of lineups that utilize those guys because they offer me a lot of edge in GPPs. Um, that's how I prefer to use the tools. So hopefully this was good and informative and answered a bunch of questions. Um, again, answer... I'll answer whatever in the Discord if you guys have them. Um, I'm going to keep working through the night, I think. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for dealing with the, the Twitch fiasco that happened and uh, and not being able to get into the Discord stuff. I'm sorry about that again. Um, I appreciate all you guys. I appreciate all the support. And uh, let's just fucking crush this NFL slate tomorrow. I'm really excited. Um, if you were not in the Discord, obviously this is going to be on YouTube, but join the Discord. Go over to paterdfs.com, go to uh, member tools, and go join the Discord. It's free to join. If you don't have a subscription to Pater and you liked what you saw in this video and kind of the process of building things out and how the tools work, come grab a subscription. Um, it's 40 bucks a month. It's the best value that you're going to find in the industry. Uh, or you can get a day pass for 5 bucks if you want to. Um, it's a little bit low commitment to get a, to get a beta day pass, but, you know, whatever. Um, whatever you got to do. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for, for the support. And I will see you at the top of the leaderboards tomorrow.